Welcome to College Smart Radio, helping you understand the true cost of college and tackle the runaway costs of financing a college education. College Smart Radio is hosted by Beatrice Schultz, a certified financial planner and founder of West Face College Planning. Now, here's your host for College Smart Radio, Beatrice Schultz. Students who change majors or colleges are less likely to graduate in four years. And if their major does not lead to the right career, they are less likely to find a job. This costs money. On today's College Smart Radio program, I'll be discussing career assessment tools to use to help college-bound students make better major and college choices. I'm going to talk about why they're important, and also I'm going to talk about a specific one that I recommend for my clients. Hi, I'm Beatrice Schultz. Welcome to our weekly show, College Smart Radio, where we help you tackle the runaway costs of a college education. Our show is all about bringing up-to-date and practical advice to parents who are dealing with the cost of a college education for their kids. With some private schools costing well over $60,000 a year, a UC costing $35,000 and a California State University running $25,000, parents need more help than ever. We bring you that help by sharing ways to pay less, tapping into financial aid, and prioritizing your source of funds to make sure you get through the most expensive years of your life. Based on my own education and experience, I share my insights with you week in and week out. I am a certified financial planner and the owner of the San Carlos-based college planning business, West Face College Planning. I host workshops and webinars on college planning and consult with parents on a daily basis. In addition to my insights, I bring in experts in many areas of the college process, from counselors, financial professionals, financial aid officers, student coaches, parents, and even students, you'll learn firsthand the ins and outs of how to pay for college and survive financially. In addition to our show, you can find lots of powerful information at our website, collegesmartradio.com. We have many articles that I've authored with up-to-date information on navigating the waters of paying for the one-way cost of college. We also have a monthly e-newsletter full of content about college planning, and we have a link to our free community parent workshops and webinars that I host to teach parents about how to pay for college and how the financial aid system really works. Now let's get into today's show. On this College Smart Radio program, I'm joined by Lisa Mader, the president of LEAP, which is an abbreviation for Learning Enrichment and Insist- Assistance Program. Lisa is a member of the National Association of College Admission Counselors, NACAC, which we've had a couple of uh, independent college counselors from NACAC on the show. And she's also the owner and CEO of LEAP and has been since 1999. The typical student embarks on the college selection journey by choosing the college they love, then the major, and finally finding a career the major will feed to. Going against the grain, LEAP suggests students embark on the journey with the end in mind, career. Instead of focusing on the four years a student will be in college, turn the attention to the 40-plus years the student will work. Lisa was a guest on College Smart Radio last fall when we were discussing the importance of following the process of career assessment, then major, and then college selection. Today, Lisa is joining us to share with us the process and tools she uses and recommends for career assessment of college-bound students. Lisa is joining us via phone from Ohio. Hi, Lisa. Welcome back to College Smart Radio. Hi, Beatrice. Thanks for having me again. Thanks so much for joining us. Lisa, a year ago, when we were discussing this topic, we were talking about the headlines, which were filled with statistics about low college graduation rates and the fact that half the students that do graduate can't find jobs that fit their education. Unfortunately, we're sitting here 12 months later, and the headlines haven't changed. Mm. So what advice do you give to parents and students who are worrying about this? Well, um, you're right. I mean, the economy is part of the problem, but I think that the families and their focus is part of the problem as well. As you, as you already said, we really focus on the 40 plus years that a student will be heading into upon college graduation um, instead of the four years. And so our advice is to really look at fit. Um, our process of coaching is called fit to flourish. And the biggest part of that is focusing on what fit is. So what's your definition of fit? I mean, fit for a career, that's when you say fit? Right. So, well, there's many different fits that we're looking at. So one of them is fit for career, and that's where we're starting. So you can only do so by understanding who you are. Um, When we do our one-hour consultation with students, you know, they go into it wanting us to talk about, okay, what careers are the good fit? And what they find is it's not until the very end of that hour 
and just a small amount of time that we're actually identifying the careers because we spend the majority of our time in a consultation with a family looking at what the wiring is of the students. Um, when I say wiring, we're looking at how they approach their work. We look at an interest inventory and what their interests are because we're trying to embrace their interest. We look at what we call their usual productive style, and this, these are their strength behaviors. Uh, we want to find a career where their strength behaviors would be an asset to that job. Uh, and then we finally also look at their needs, their expectations of other people and their environment, and we strive to get those needs met so that in the end, if we find a fit in all those areas, then we have students who are going to flourish. And that's what parents really want for their kids is to see them be happy and to flourish in life. Absolutely. So what's the process that you go through or what is the actual assessment or that how do you get that information from the kids? So the first step, once a family indicates that they're wanting to do this, um, is we have them take the Berkman personality assessment. It's been around since the 1950s and um, several years ago when we decided we wanted to do a better job at college major and career coaching. Um, we didn't just use the decide we were going to use the Berkman for this. Actually, at the time, I didn't even know about the Berkman as a tool. Um, and we were looking at different assessments. We finally settled on the Berkman because all of those areas that I just described where we look for fit, all of those can be established by one tool. So that's amazing. Um, so the student takes the Berkman assessment. It's online. So that's the great part. I'm in Ohio. You're in California. Our listeners are all over the country. We can work with them regardless of location because this is a web-based assessment. Um, so the student first gets the link for their Berkman assessment. That'll take them anywhere between 35 and 45 minutes to take their assessment. Well, before you move on yeah. beyond the Berkman, let's talk a little bit about how long it is, how, what kind of questions they are. Does a student need to prepare for it, or is it no, pretty straightforward? it's one of those, and we've all heard it before, is you go with your gut. Um, nothing to overthink. The questions are actually quite simple. Um, you're first asked true-false questions. Um, you, you're asked true-false questions about your beliefs, about other people and yourself, and then you're taken through a series of questions where you're asked um, if, if income and education level were the same for the uh, series of careers that you're presented with, which would be your preference to do as a career? And so that's the final part of the test. So it's really it's three sections. Um, it's not, you don't time out of it, but, you know, we say, again, don't overthink it and um, give us your gut response on those. But very simple, easy, not taxing, and there's nothing to do to prepare. Well, I, uh, for our listeners here, I, all of, I now recommend, in fact, I include in my college funding solution package the Berkman assessment because I think it's an important part of understand of, of, of actually how, what your college funding plan is and how much you pay for college because the college choice is such a big deal. And if you change colleges, there's a big cost function. But I'm going to go back to Lisa's comment, and I, I mentioned it when I we did the show last year, but I think it's so, it's so valuable, this Berkman, because I did it myself. And that question, which is, what career would you want if you got paid exactly the same amount and you had the skills to do it? That was a real powerful question for me because um, when I did that assessment and my my undergrads in engineering and I've been in engineering my career and marketing and sales, but always in numbered oriented fields. But since I've been here as a college financial planner, specifically the social side of those jobs, that's what Lisa picked up. She's like, oh, this is a good fit for you because you like to help people. But I'd never really noticed that before in any of my other assessments, which were, hey, you're good in math, you like sciences, engineering is a good field. But this financial planning ended up being, especially the college financial planning, made me feel good about my fits and feel good about this Berkman actually pulling that out, which wasn't really an assessment that I'd done on my own. Well, and I think, too, you know, you, you bring up a good, um, a, a good thing there when you say, Beatrice, that, you know, you were good at math, you were good at science. Um, I think not only do we pick that up if we do a very simplistic tool instead of something with the depth of the Berkman, but often kids are going through school, and when we see that they're good at math and good at science, they're being told by teachers, by parents, oh, go be an engineer. And they're missing some underlining needs and strength behaviors of who they are that, you know, had you tapped into that earlier, you maybe would have made a change much earlier. Absolutely. I think it's really true for me. And uh, it, it, 
that's a, actually we'll talk a little bit about that, about the timing of when you should do this assessment. But I interrupted you part way through. Let's talk a little bit more about the process. Um, so you kind of went through the Berkman yeah, assessment. So the yeah. student starts by taking their Berkman. It'll be 35 to 45 minutes, web-based, um, at home, from the comfort of home. The next thing is, while the Berkman looks at your hard wiring, um, Berkman as a personality tool is not looking at ability. Okay, so when I'm directing a student, I need to not only look at their hard wiring as an individual personality-wise, but I also need to see um, who they are academically. A student could look like a potential surgeon on their Berkman, but if they don't have the grades and the testing strength to match, then that's not where we're going to send them. We're going to send them in a different direction. So we also have what we call our student profile, and the student profile is then also um, completed by the student and returned directly to LEAP, where really what we're doing is we're merging the scientific data of the Berkman, because it is a scientifically proven tool, and the um, academic profile and preferences of the student as reported by the student, and so we're taking part science, part art, it's, it's the art then of dialing in to some best fit options for them to further explore. So they do those two things once they've taken place. Um, one of our Leap Fit to Flourish consultants then uh, schedules a time with the family for their one hour review. We do a one hour review where again, we're really looking at what, what we've learned about the students, strength, behaviors, needs, and interests. And then at the end, we tie it back to their um, to, to an option of kind of I always say it's a bucket of options that would be good for the student for further exploration and then the student's going to have some homework um, at the end of the time together we release to them their full Berkman which actually is a 56 page report on the student's uh, personality and then their fit to flourish report which identifies the careers and how to do uh, further exploration and even interpret your Berkman and that's a 25 page report so they're getting a lot of powerful information there the, the that Berkman assessment and from that also they're going to have a suggestion for colleges and majors and career yes. that they want to go into. So we'll tell Hey Lisa, them. I'm going to interrupt you just yeah. for a moment. Um, we're going to come right back. We're going to take a break right now with Lisa Mater on College Smart Radio. For more information on today's topic, visit collegesmartradio.com or call area code 650-587-1559. College Smart Radio continues in moments on AM 1220 KDOW. Contact Beatrice Schultz at collegesmartradio.com or call 650-587-1559. Now back to College Smart Radio with your host, Beatrice Schultz, on AM 1220 KDOW. Welcome back to College Smart Radio, where we help you tackle the runaway costs of college. I'm Beatrice Schultz. We all know that college is expensive and will most likely be some of the most costly years for a family. Understanding the cost of college and how to keep the costs in control and how to navigate the financial aid system is a smart thing to know. To help families beyond this radio show, I host free community workshops and webinars several times a month that explain the cost of various colleges, how the financial aid system works, and things to consider to prepare yourself for this tremendous expense. You can find my workshop schedule at collegesmartradio.com. If you've just joined us, my guest today on College Smart Radio is Lisa Mater, an independent college counselor who works with high school and college students every day to guide them in career, college, and major selections to ensure they make the right choices with their valuable college money. I'm talking with Lisa Mater about the importance of career selection in the college planning process and career assessment tools, specifically the Berkman Fit to Flourish that Lisa is uh, that Lisa practices in her practice. Lisa, we were just discussing the fit part of the Fit to Flourish, and we I kind of cut you off when you started talking about reporting some of the information that comes that you're reporting to the students and right. the parents. So in the Fit to Flourish report, um, while we're giving them kind of a bucket of options of careers for further exploration, and I always in the consultation, um, letting the students know that the ball's kind of in their court now to do homework, and we give them the resources to research these careers and decide if that's feeling like a good fit and then suggestions for further exploration beyond that. Um, but then we also are identifying for them what college majors can lead to this career. So we're truly starting out a career, 
We go back to the college major then. On the college major, you know, if you want to be an engineer, you must get an engineering, engineering degree. If you want to be um, a, a nurse, you must get a nursing degree. But there are fields like, for instance, with you, Beatrice, financial planner, there are a whole host of degrees that could lead to that career. So we'll identify for them if this is more of a singularly focused college major leading to that career or if they've got some options. And then our next step is within the Fit to Flourish report, we are going to give them a sampling of colleges uh, that not only offer that major but are reputable for that major. Uh, just because a college offers a major doesn't mean that it should would always be the best choice. So, okay, so the cl- client comes out of it with a fit or an idea of how to research majors and colleges in, in, in the order that we, I guess, propose or we recommend, which mm-hmm. is start with career, go back to major, and then consider what colleges offer those majors and that you want to go to the college with the right fit for you. Let's talk a little bit about the flourish part of the fit to flourish. Yeah, so, you know, um, as we've, I've worked with teenagers now for 22 years in education. I started out as a teacher, so like you, I did not start uh, where I've ended up, and I wish I would have had the Berkman 25 years ago, 25 plus years ago, to lead my process. Um, So it would look a little bit different, but, you know, I've landed at a good fit. Um, You know, what I hear from parents, and I think you probably hear it from a um, financial standpoint as well, is parents just want their kids to be happy. I mean, I'm the mom of three kids, and um, I look forward to them finding their fit and hoping that that fit's going to bring them happiness and flourish. So that is why we've actually named our coaching that we do fit to flourish because if you find the fit you'll get the flourish you'll truly um, flourish in life and be happy and as parents that's what I see parents telling me day in and day out is their hope for their children they don't really care what they do as long as they're happy I'm sure that resonates with everyone listening in on the radio show it's so true and parents often make sacrifices because they want to make sure their kids are happy. So we want to make sure that any sacrifices they do make or maybe thinning out their retirement to pay for college, which I really don't recommend, that they can feel very confident that the right, they're making the right choice as far as college fit for their kids. Um, Lisa, when should kids be taking these, the Fit to Flourish? When should, when's the best time to be? When do you recommend or how do you manage? What age do you think kids should be taking the Fit to Flourish? Well, of course, I have my ideal about when I would like to start working with a family, as you do as a college financial planner. Um, there are ideal times. My ideal time would be if I could meet this student, um, you know, second half of the sophomore year, summer between the sophomore and junior year. Uh, I don't like to do it much younger. Their Berkman results aren't going to be radically different if I give it to a freshman, but I will tell you that a freshman or first semester sophomore, most of the time, and there are a few exceptions, are really not ready to engage with their results and start thinking about college. It's just they're overwhelmed by the fact that they're just trying to get their feet firmly planted in high school and uh, figure out you know, how to study and maintain friendships and all that comes with high school. Um, so... I really, I like to put it off, and I'll, you know, I'll be honest, I, I have a sophomore son myself, and I'm waiting till the second semester. Um, you know I'm chomping at the bit to do this, but we're going to wait a few more months before we do this ourselves, because I see that that timing is when the student's receptive, and the student has to be ready to engage on thinking about college. Um, I often get asked, is there a time that's too late? And there, there really isn't. You know, I'm sure just like you, Beatrice, you want to get families started as early as possible and saving for college and being smart about this and saving for retirement. But at the same time, um, we want to help them at whatever stage they might be at. So uh, right now I've got seniors that are coming to me that are pretty much already decided on where they're applying to college. So we're going to look at what majors at those colleges and what careers could, you know, we're fitting that college piece into the rest of the fit that we have. We often work with students already in college who um, it's time to declare a major and they didn't even know that this kind of coaching existed. So, you know, we can step in at any point in the process, but ideally I would love to grab that 16-year-old so that they're fit to flourish can lead the college exploration, college selection piece. One of the things that you just said is that the student needs to be ready to engage in thinking about the college process. Mm -hmm. Do they need to know what what they want to do in 
as a career or as a major? Because so many families come in and they just say, well, she, she has no idea what she wants to study, but she's looking at maybe going to UC Berkeley or whatever the case may be. I mean, is that kind of an okay spot for you to start talking yeah. to a student as long as they're older or at right. the end of the sophomore as, year? You know, as long as they're, as a, as a second semester sophomore, they're ready to think about college. They may not be ready to really think about um, all that's involved with that, they might be overwhelmed by the process, and that's what you and I are are both trying to do and your other guests to, to help them navigate that and make it easier. Um, but, yeah, they, you know, the kid who has no clue, we're going to jumpstart that thinking. And I always say, you know, we're midpoint. Everybody started thinking about what they wanted to be when they grow up, when they were two or three or four years old. Um, we're certainly not going to leave their fit to flourish coaching with a definite answer. We're actually creating a menu of options um, that would all be good fits. Uh, there's not one good fit for anybody. We don't believe that. So we're a midpoint in this process. For some students, they're a little bit farther along, but for others, maybe we're going to be the one jump-starting it. I really describe it as we are creating a lens by which they will look through to evaluate any career. So when they, if they came in completely clueless, um, they will, by the end, know, you know, maybe I need a career that, um, you know, my my good people skills are a strength, um, that I get an opportunity to have a time to reflect before I make decisions, you know, things like that. So they're evaluating any career that they in the future may think about through a proper lens that's based upon their fit, on their hard wiring. So when you are talking to parents, students, do you have a couple of examples of some of your students that might kind of resonate with some of the audience saying, yeah, that's kind of what's happening with my kid too, as far as examples of how the Berkman has changed or helped them to guide them? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, here's a, here's a big one that sometimes uh, people don't think about, and it goes back to what I just said about um, decision-making processes. So recently met with a family, and the student was actually considering being a physician, um, you know, at that point, I, I looked at, I okay, this kid I think could do this. It, it looks like a good fit. Um, thought he wanted to, you know, maybe do more of a trauma doc thing. When I looked at the student, though, he is a student who needed plenty of time to make decisions, do research, and we really got into a great conversation about how rushed, you know, what does he feel like when he feels pressured to make decisions? And then applying that to what that field would look like, practicing being a doctor in that setting. Um, so then that allowed some conversations about how we can take that and practice in a different setting, maybe a private practice or being a specialist, something like that. Um, so that's a big one. Just, you know, sometimes it's not so much what the career is, but even where you're practicing it or that environment in which you're working. Um, so that would be a big one for sure. That's a good example. For, now, for that student, did do you know what happened to that student? I kind of love to hear the stories about some of the you students you worked in earlier. Really and, one, so we don't yeah, have a follow-up yeah. on that one yet. But, you know, going back, another good example, too, for you would be as we're creating this bucket and we're giving the possible majors that lead to the careers, um, I was working with a student earlier today who, you know, I, I think, again, somebody who wanted to be a doctor, and I actually think this one could do it. And let me say that we deal with more kids who don't want to be doctors than do, but these are <laughs> two recent examples. Um, but also had asked me about fit of engineering, fit of business. And I said, you know, I don't really see the student um, having a good fit business-wise, and, and there were a whole host of reasons, so we didn't uh, get into that. I, I won't take the time to get into that today. But, um, you know, said that while being a doctor felt like it fit, um, engineering is still an interest, and gosh, you know, I'm already a senior. How do I narrow this down? Well, we were able to give some good coaching in that um, hour about, you know, if you went into biomedical engineering, which would be a great engineering field if the student decided he wanted to be an engineer, it still keeps the door open for that's a, that's a great undergrad major for someone who's going to go on to medical school or someone who's going to become a physician's assistant. So it kind of took the pressure off to have an exact answer for the student. The student was able to think like, okay, here is a college major that actually could lead to several different careers. And if I decide at the end of college that I'm not ready to go on beyond the four years right now, then I still am employable at that point. 
Lisa, thanks, thanks so much for sharing some of your examples, and I really appreciate you joining us today on College Smart Radio. Oh, thanks for having me, and Beatrice, we love working with you and your students, and, and just it's our honor to, to work with you guys. Likewise, thanks. A description of the Leap Fit to Flourish Berkman Method Coaching and Assessment is available on my West Face College Planning website under services, and I encourage all my listeners to check it out and give me a call with any questions. I really believe it's a critical assessment in the college selection process, which, which is a major driver in your college financial financial planning. Because of that, I do include the Fit to Flourish Berkman assessment in my college funding solution package for every college-bound student. Well, that wraps up another weekly show of College Smart Radio. We hope you picked up some new information today that helps you figure out ways to manage the runaway costs of college. You can hear us each week here on KDOW 1220 AM, Saturdays at 3 p.m. We promise to bring you up-to-date information from the front lines of helping parents deal with the most expensive years of your life. This is Beatrice Schultz. Thanks for tuning in to College Smart Radio. We look forward to sharing more helpful information with you next week. You've been listening to College Smart Radio with certified financial planner Beatrice Schultz. If you have questions on today's topic, log on to collegesmartradio.com or call area code 650-587-1559. That's 650-587-1559. And join us next week at this time for another edition of College Smart Radio on AM 1220 KDOW.